This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Only a few days passed since that time. After that, I was rescued by Uisi and his subordinates, whom Rena had called in. Aside from my entirely blank state of mind, I had no external injuries. The most I had was a small burn mark from where the stun gun hit me. Oh, she didn't actually nail our hands in. As I was having a checkup at the hospital, Uisi-san asked me all sorts of things. But I don't really remember what he asked or how I answered them. From what I heard, surprisingly, Mion still hadn't been captured. How?! There was apparently a great many hallways and smaller rooms extending out from the depths of the prison. It wouldn't be strange if she had fled to one of those and hidden herself. The one fortunate aspect amid all the misfortune was that Shion had been safely secured by the police. Yeah! Did they- was it really not the swap? Was that really actually Mion at the end there? And not Shion? I was so certain it was Shion who had gone crazy. I was, like, certain of it. I guess it still could be. But they definitely seem to want to be concluding that it was Mion. When I last saw Mion, she seemed like she was going to take me with her and then kill me. She probably didn't have enough time to, though, since Uishi-san came running in faster than she predicted. That was the only really fortunate thing to have happened. Of course, the rescued Shion, despite having no external wounds, now had a big, deep wound in her heart. She was in a severe state of shock and confusion when they rescued her, and apparently she bit the police officers trying to resist. From what he heard, she was seeing Mion and everyone she saw. Hated not only the hospital, but even her own home. And had shut herself up somewhere in Shishibone, hiding her location. Additionally, in fear that Mion would come for her, she was moving from place to place every day, and even her parents weren't sure where she actually was. Yeah, she's super paranoid now. I wonder why. Whenever she was living, even now... Shion was spending her days in fear of Mion's shadow. The police were investigating the Sonozaki's underground storehouse at this moment. Since they couldn't find the remains of the other sacrifices, hadn't Mion thrown the corpses into a well? I had a feeling I'd said that to him. That meant a hidden tunnel, vertical like a well, was somewhere in those underground passages. The secret underground, without any maps or architectural drawings, which had swallowed up the remains of Rika, Satoko, and everyone else and was still unwilling to speak the truth. I was brought back to that basement again, too, for an on-the-site inspection or something, but I didn't remember being of any help. I never wanted to go back there again. For days afterward, the Sonozaki's living in Okinomiya, in other words, Mion and Shion's parents, the big-name Yakuza, would come to our house to apologize, bringing in many followers with them. That's not intimidating or anything! However much as my parents refused it, they piled up many hundred thousand yen bills, calling it consolation money, every day. The amount of money grew each day, and after it had passed two million yen, they were then given an envelope containing a letter. I don't know what was written in the letter. My parents talked about it by themselves for two whole nights, and decided to move away. Bribery! And now we have to leave Reno! No! Soka. No, we can't leave Best Girl behind. No! We owe Rena a life debt at this point, so... No... Yeah, she will. There's nobody her age here anymore. Oh, this sucks. Oh... Rena smiled sadly. If I had just said, yeah, I thought it would make her even more lonely, so I changed the subject. That's how I broached it. Mion hadn't actually fled, but had been demoned away in the truest sense of the term. Where she went after she disappeared, that we didn't know. What was there, where she had disappeared to. I hoped that there was a hobby shop dealing in imports, the kind Mion liked. In that place, she would definitely be free from the burdensome fetters of her family, and live not as Mion Sonozaki, but as just Mion, and enjoy herself. Maybe she's already met up with Satoko and Rika. They must also have been waiting for the day Rena and I would join them, spending all their time doing club activities as lively as they always were. When I told Rena that, she smiled and nodded to me. 
The incidents the Sonozaki family had been trying so hard to hide, too, were exposed to the magazines from this single tiny seam. The serial incidents of recent years were all pulled up like a long vine in the ground, one by one, and for many days news of it was brought up on talk and variety shows. The shows, which were comedic and silly, never once tried to touch upon the grim, heavy history that Mion had been bearing. It made me mad to see them bringing this stuff up in jest. <sighs> but there was nothing I could do about it now. How big an impression would these short few weeks I spent in Hinamizawa have on my life? During those few weeks, I met my best friends, and I had the best experiences of my life. I would probably never forget it as long as I lived. As for the distorted image of Mion that the media created, after the masses got tired of treating her like a plaything, they would ball her up, throw her in the trash, and then she would fade from their memories. As somebody, as one of the few people who knew the real Mion, I must always make sure I remember her. Beyond any doubt, that will surely come become my offering to her. The sky reached so far up, and towering cumulonimbus clouds floated through it. The real summer was just before our eyes. Even now, whenever 10 p.m. came around, I would expect a phone call from Shion, or Mion, rather. Now that everything was over, of course she would never call me. But it was precisely because she wouldn't call me that I was scared of who would call me this time. Plus, Mion still hadn't been caught. I couldn't say for sure that everything was completely over. On the other side of that fear, though, were my prayers that Mion was safe. Why? She literally is a horrible, psychopathic, evil person. When I thought like that, I was able to sleep, even with such terrifying thoughts. The lights were off. Before her attacking, when the lights were off, was something that scared me. However, that feeling changed to regret within two days. The moonlight filtering through the gap in the curtains shone onto the desk and illuminated a doll. That's right, the doll that I should have given to Mion that day. She said it was an import from England or something, and that it was all the rage, didn't she? From what Shion said, the most popular among them were the ones wearing the fluffy dress. After being released from the incident, the first place I went to was that toy store. Everything was apparently sold out besides the fans on the storefront displays. I was refused once they said they wouldn't sell the display products, but when they realized I was a Survivor A from that incident, they immediately consented. Of course, even if I bought it, I might never have the chance to give it to her again. Even knowing that, I waited for the opportunity to give it to her. I waited like this for the opportunity, with it on the desk so I could give it to her at any time. Plonk. There was a weird noise. It was a noise I wasn't used to hearing. It was too... big to be raindrops. And it was completely different from the sound of lost bugs when they make their way and ram into the fluorescent lights. I figured I must have misheard and nestled back into my futon. Plonk. The noise happened again. I wasn't hearing things. I definitely heard it. Where was it coming from? I got up and turned on the light. If there was a second, there would be a third. From where, though? I listened carefully. Plunk. The window. Some sort of pebbles were colliding with my window. When I realized they weren't being blown there by the wind, but rather being thrown by a person, I gave a start. I looked at the clock. It was 2 a.m. Who would it be at a time like this? I quietly peek out front, through the gap in the curtains. In the light at the gate, despite it being so late, I saw someone. They picked up a piece of gravel and threw it at this window. It hit the window and made a plonking noise. Who was it? <laughs> I caught my breath in surprise. If my eyes weren't deceiving me, that person was... Mion. Do not go out and talk to her! Do not call the police. I threw open the window and looked at the figure again. My eyes certainly weren't deceiving me. It was Mion! It was Mion! She was alive! Mion pressed her index finger to her lips and made a shh motion so I wouldn't shout. If she hadn't, well, I was nearly about to cry out. Mion was in a very delicate position right now. 
Even if it was the middle of the night, I shouldn't call out her name. I waved to her, gesturing that I'd be right over, flung on my coat atop the pajamas, and flew out the door. Why? <laughs> you are the stupidest human being I've ever encountered in a visual novel! <laughs> this guy makes Michiru from Fruit of Grisea look like a genius. And that's really saying something. Oh my gosh. He is the dumbest idiot in all video games. I quickly hit the brakes just before going down the stairs. Although happiness was sprouting within me, I had the sad feeling that this would be our final party. One way or another, it's gonna be! So I went back to my room again and grabbed the doll. If there was a god... I don't think I would have ever thanked him as much as today. WHY?! Even if it would be the last time we ever saw each other, I was so grateful for this one chance to hear her out. I slipped onto my sandals, unlocked the door, and unhooked the chain, and leaped out of the house straight into death. <laughs> Mio! Hahaha! 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 It was like how we used to meet every morning. Mion waved to me and responded like she always did. Mion literally flat out told us if we survived, we should never ever see her again. She herself said that. Uh, uh, I changed my mind, folks. I said, I can't remember if it was chapter 2 or chapter 1 where I said Keiichi was probably the most likable of the visual novel protagonists that I had played. Nope. Sorry, you are no longer as likable as Tomoya from Clonade. I can't believe I'm saying that, given all the terrible things Tomoya did. But, Tomoya wasn't this stupid. It was doubtlessly Mion. You're not even going to tell your parent. Like, gosh, he, like I said, he's just the biggest stupid idiot in all of history. It was the real Mio. <laughs> she certainly wasn't acting like she knew the police were following her. It was almost like she was a patient who had gotten tired of staying in the hospital and had snuck out. Her speech was relaxed enough to make me think that, and I couldn't help but be surprised. That relaxation, I thought, was more like me own, and I was happy for it. Actually, wait, hang on. No, 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 Okay. In terms of visual novel protagonists, if we're excluding the Ace Attorney series, because that's in a league of its own, protagonists from most likable to least likable are MC from Doki Doki Literature Club, then Tomoya from Clonade, then Keiichi from this, and then way, way dead and last would be Yuji from Grisea. <laughs> I wanted to kill you. That was when I noticed them. On Mion's forehead were big droplets of sweat. Her expression, too, which I thought to be a satisfied smile, was upon closer inspection trembling slightly, and I realized that she was forcing it. <laughs> A pained note was beginning to enter her words as well, as if just smiling was a feat for her. Wait, is is this not the one who tortured us, but this was the one in the jail cell? <laughs> Mion's smile crumbled and started to stiffen. Did she push herself this much to come all the way here for me? Her laughter cut off and changed into a rough breathing. I reached out to rub her back, but she knocked me away. <laughs> to give you, Mion, this doll. 
I had wanted to do this one last feign, because I knew how little time you had left. But this last feign, it... Uh, she stabbed us! And that's what happens when you are the dumbest human being on the planet! My stomach is burning. Mion took a meat cleaver like knife and stabbed me. It's almost like you should have called the police when you saw her, you asinine idiot. And she pushed it in tight and took it and twisted it. Mion? Hey, what? T it hurts. <laughs> I cowered on the ground. My stomach was so hot, it was almost spewing fire. Mion watched it, then took a few steps back and cackled. I'm not scared by this at all. I'm literally just annoyed at how stupid you, uh, <laughs> Keiji is. I almost said Yuji. That's not good. If I'm confusing you for Yuji, that's not reflecting good on your character. <laughs> the last words Mion left me with that day came back to me. Mm, he is so stupid, it's painful. Oh, the body, by then the demon will have taken it over. The demon, the demon, the demon. Oh, now she got reptile eyes! Took you long enough. This can't... I thought we had finally been able to meet... Our... Gumbo! You are... How many times do I have to tell him that he's the stupidest idiot who ever idioted? Oh! Chapter 2, you were going in such a great direction, and then all of this happened. My gosh, Mion, in a pool of blood of my own design, is the doll I bought for Mion. Died in red. So red. Mion. The good fortune of having been allowed to meet Mion once more, and the misfortune of that meeting being torn apart before my eyes. Should I be grateful or curse it? It's not, it's not fate's fault! That was your fault! My emotions were neither of those, as my consciousness sunk deep into a black swamp. The doll I bought for Mion, the blood, had ruined it. No matter how I scrubbed and scrubbed, it had needlessly been ruined. Ruined. It's a sad moon it was so white, it looked frozen. June 28th, 1983. A violent incident occurred in Hinamizawa Village, Shishiboni City, Redacted Prefecture. The victim was Keiji Maibara, also a victim of the previous strain of disappearances. At around 2 a.m., he was stabbed in the stomach with a bladed object by the suspect of the last case, Mion Sonozaki, and was gravely wounded. He was discovered when his parents woke up and then was transported to the clinic. He escaped to death. Oh, he lived! The criminal fled the scene. On that same day, at approximately the same time, a fall accident occurred in the Kamishiki apartment complex in Shishiboni City, Redacted Prefecture. The victim was Shion Sonozaki, also a victim of the previous stream of disappearances. Late on the same night, neighbors overheard her having a big fight with someone and informed the manager. The manager used a master key to enter the room and discovered that a victim had fallen from her 8th floor balcony to her death. How did she know where she was? The room had been torn apart and appeared to show traces of a fight. One neighbor has frequently visited the Sonazaki house for a long time, and testified that she heard what sounded like the two sisters having a fight, trading insults back and forth. We believe this was related to the injury case that occurred on the same day in Hinamizawa Village, perpetrated by said incident uh, suspect. And did a thorough search of the room, but we could not find any traces that would imply that anyone but the victim was present. The victim fell straight down into the foliage of a parking strip. Her neck broke and she died immediately. Her clothing was disheveled and had markings that would imply a scuffle. 
We also believe, however, that it could have been an insanity-induced suicide attempt, based on the particular mental state of the victim after the incident. We are, con co we are conducting a thorough examination of both fronts, suicide and homicide. Is that really how it's going to end?